So, to pick up from our, our recent chat about the Corey West, we, this is the, it's getting to be that time of year. We should seek out the wiz, the knowledge of the three wise men. Not like the three kings, but the three wise men. The three wise men of arm wrestling. And of course, we all know who that would be. It would be Mike Aiello, Don Underwood, and Daniel Mosier. Okay. What makes those the three wise men is they are the three components me and Mr. Corey West have in common. Now, we both pulled Don Underwood recently, but we did not pull the 2010 version of Don Underwood who went to Armors in Las Vegas and basically destroyed the entire world in one day. We pulled the kindler, gentler Don Underwood. And I think we both, we both came out of that basically even. We pulled, we pulled Don slightly differently, but we should, you know, we should get Don's opinion of it. But uh, Corey went wrist to wrist with him, like he seems to do, like he seems to pull wrist to wrist with everybody, which is what I'm expecting him to want to be. Unless he's also watching these videos and I'm basically coaching him how to pull me. And... I pulled Don more palm to palm, which is what I plan to do with Corey. So we'll call that a basically even, but would like, you know, we could get more insight. Oh, 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 oh girl, oh girl. Good girl, good girl. We'll get more under, and I'll tag Don in this, and I'll ask him to weigh in. Now, Don is also a training partner of Corey's. So, those two probably knew exactly where that match was going, you know, weeks, weeks ahead of time. And they were both probably hitting their pet moves and then trying whatever tricky, you know, cheeky monkey bum looker stuff you try when you're practicing with your partners and then you're going to end up competing them. Because we all do. We all learn little bits of information about our training partners that we store in the file in case it ever comes down to a free t-shirt or a... Uh, $10 gift certificate at the burger bar that they're holding the tournament in. All right. The other wise man, Mr. Aiello, of the Mike Aiello factor, the combination abs tan that uh, factors into the analysis on part one. Now, Corey pulled him in competition, and Corey beat Mike Aiello. It looked like Mike got the jump on him, pulled Corey to, oh, 11.30 or so. And I'll hand it to, I'll hand it to Corey on this one. He got that wrist turned in, developed all kinds of force from that losing position and dug that arm out of there. Um, that was some impressive pulling. I pulled Mike Aiello in competition several years ago. And our match went about the same. Mike Aiello hit me over. He hit me over farther than what he hit Corey over. And I got my hand turned in, but I couldn't dig my arm out. That, uh, Mike was able to tuck in, curl up, and, yeah, I, could, I couldn't dig my arm out of there. That, anything, man, I just got beat in that match. I got beat pretty bad. And Ayala was on fire that day. He beat Travis, too. So I pulled with Ayala in practice since then. And what I learned is try not to let him get the jump on you. Don't let him get wrist to wrist on you. And by all means, don't let him curl up and get down on top of you, which is what I got to prevent Corey from doing for me. If Corey gets all tucked up like Mike Aiello did, I'm not going to be able to pull my arm out from 400 plus odd pounds of turbocharged Cummins diesel Dodge truck. But... So in that match, we will give that comparison, the, the Underwood comparison, me and Corey come out equal. We both get one point. In the yellow comparison, we give that to Corey, because Corey actually beat Mike in competition, and I did not. But we'll get some color commentary from Mr. Aiello. I'll, I'll tag him as well when this posts. 
the third wise man, the pepper farmer from Louisiana, Mr. Chain Blue Lightning himself, Daniel Mosier, who goes and smacks everybody to the losing side of the pad, no matter who you are. He, uh, when he pulled Corey, it looked like it looked like he hit Corey all the way to the pad before Corey even got his foot off the clutch. I mean, Corey was probably still sitting there at the line. Tack Amon on red, and Daniel Moser just flat blasted through him. Now, I pulled Daniel Moser at a WAL event, and all these all these videos are linked in the playlist. You can see them. Eventually, I'll have video editing software, and I can show clips of them. And. I actually thought about playing the videos on my phone and showing them to you in the camera, but I got to get this dog brushed this time of year, man. It takes 40 hours to shed this dog out. So I brush her about every single day for a week, and then every other day for a week or two, and then every three days for a week before she's finally shed it out. My house looks like uh, someone disassembled a bunch of rabbits. There's hair all over. But anyways, when Daniel Mosier pulled me, and that was the first time I'd ever gripped up with him. And I remember seeing him pull, because I pulled in South Carolina for a real long time. And those Louisiana boys, we knew, I mean, we knew all of them. And my God, Louisiana used to have a team with like 30 or 40 people on it, regular, that would show up to a tournament. But anyways, Daniel Mosier hit me. And I don't think I hit the pad, but it was close. And I was... <laughs> Smacked me over deep, man. I had both hands on the steering wheel, both feet on the emergency brake, just trying to stop, stop, stop. I was, oh man, he hit me over fast. But I was actual, actually able to, when that stopped, I was actually able to get my arm back out of there. And uh, that match went my way. But the only other time I felt anything close to that was when I pulled Corey Miller in practice. Not Corey West, who lives down south, but Corey Miller, who lives out west. He was living in Wyoming at the time. He had a practice. I pulled Corey Miller like eight or nine times, and I think he smacked me to the pin pad ten or eleven times. It was brutal how fast those guys are. But, um, so in the Daniel Mosier factor, we're going to give that to me, because I beat Daniel, and Corey Miller did not. But that kind of alludes into what I was saying before. When you're a middleweight and a light heavyweight, you pull a lot more faster people. There aren't too many people in the super heavyweight division that just slap, flat, slam you and flash you to the pin pad. I mean, Travis can do it every once in a while, but for the most part, you don't get that blinding, um, full power, straight to 11, stuff in the in the super heavyweight class they they take off more like motorboats or pheasants it's just a nice easy transition so that concludes the final the final analysis when it comes to the three wise men we tied on underwood we give the nod to Corey on Aiello we give the nod to Todd the nod to Todd and Todd we trust we give the nod to Todd on Mr. Mosier but We'll see what those three guys say in the comments. All right, thank you.